welcome back to James's Repair Shop. Good to see everyone again. Uh, you may have noticed it's a little bit slower with the videos these days. Uh, the main issue, not an issue, but it's something that came up uh, in the last month. I started working again part-time. So I'm doing three days a week at the uh, local Canadian Tire. It's only about five minute drive from here. So the opportunity came up, so I took it. I uh, really enjoy the job. It's very active. I keep I'm on the move all day long. There's no there's no downtime from it. It's just go go go. But the video production has slowed because of that. So I usually you know I'm working three full days, so it's eight to four thirty. Sometimes on Fridays I do nine till five thirty. But generally it's been eight to four thirty uh, Wednesday through Friday. Anyway, um, that that give you a little indication of why things have slowed down a bit. I still have all this to do. I've also, I've framed in and uh, built the uh, vent ducting I was talking about, and that's the one that has a 20 inch discharge fan on it. I have some uh, filter cloth to go on that, on the bottom. So there's that. I have this door panel off the uh, 65 hard top that I scrapped. And the reason I have it here, and that's not what this video is about, but it is a coming video, is that I try to find a way to fix the door panel on the 65 hardtop that I bought this spring, the one I've been driving on through the summer. On the driver's door, it's very similar to this, even though this is the passenger's door, but it's very similar to this, the cracks and the brakes in it. I'll bring it over and show you. So it's, it's cracked down like this and it has the typical stuff hope you can see that the typical stuff for one of these door panels so the reason I brought this one in and I saved them is because it has vinyl on it. these vinyl the actual factory vinyl and I'm hoping to use this vinyl to fix the, the black one or at least I'm going to experiment on this door panel before I tackle the black one there's also factory foam all in here that I could use to fill in so anyway, that's something coming in the future. I need to get that panel done. Also in that panel, and this one's totally shot. You can see behind it here that this door panel is done. The card's completely gone inside, it's falling apart. But on the black, on the, the hard top with the black interior, it's not so bad. It's all there. It's just a little bit softer and frayed. So I did fix one with some fiberglass resin, but we'll save all that for the actual video. Also, if you remember, I did a short video on uh, diagnosing a, uh, an engine tick. So through in that video, it was quick, it was just kind of a fun thing to do. I uh, used a pry bar, that's how I did it. There's lots of ways you can do it. One guy, uh, one, there's lots of ways you can diagnose a tick. Uh, that you can go as far as getting a stethoscope and check it out. But anyway, immaterial. So from doing that diagnosis video, I, rec I uh, recognized that the fuel pump was the problem, not the engine lifters. So this saved me a lot of money to not have to, knowing uh, that it was the uh, fuel pump, not the engine lifters, or in the engine, in the uh, valve train in the engine, and it was only the fuel pump, I was able to change it quickly because I had one off of the hard top that I stripped down. So this is the fuel pump off the uh, hard top, the 65 hard top that I bought this spring. I'll call it the uh, derby car because it's got that scruffy look to it. And the one I put the wheels on and the one I did the uh, diagnosis on. So I never did much with that after. I did the video and kind of forgot about it. Put the fuel pump aside. But this is the fuel pump. Now, I'd like to dig into this fuel pump and see what is actually causing the tick. I know, I'll come up a little closer. I know that it's going to be where the, the rod hits the plunger because you can hear it in there like that. And, and that's what was ticking. But I'd like to see. I just don't want to hear it. I want to see what's in there. So I'm going to get over closer to the camera here. Hopefully you can see this. On this fuel pump, there's a pin that holds that arm in. Right there, and it's just uh, kind of knurled over to hold it in place. Uh, I believe on the factory original ones, they had a hole here with a pin in it. You could take it out 
and work with it that way. But anyway, I'm going to try to open these up a tiny bit. And I'm not trying to salvage this fuel pump. That isn't the purpose of this video. This is just to show what went on inside this pump and why that pump started making noises. All right, so let's let's get at it. And it won't it won't take long. I'll pull them out. I'll pull that arm out. I haven't had it off yet, so I don't know what's inside that. It could be pretty ugly. But let's take a look inside. And again, I'm not trying to salvage this fuel pump. Um, unless I feel I can, but I don't see the purpose in it. It's an old fuel pump. It's not even an original Ford one, I don't think. I think it's an aftermarket. Either way, I am going to salvage the fittings and everything. Never let those go. Hang on to all your fittings, all your hardware. I've got the fuel pump in... Oh sort of in my vice. I don't want to crunch it up. Again, I'm not trying to salvage this fuel pump. That's not the purpose of this. But I just want to see inside and what, what these noises, well, how these noises are caused and why what happens in them to make that noise. That's what I'm looking for. First of all, since this is loose, let's take it off, see what's in there. And I'm not kidding you, I haven't had this off yet, so this is a surprise to me as well. So I'm just going to put something under to catch any debris. Um, this fuel pump and this whole thing, I haven't done anything with it other than take it off the, the 65 hardtop that was sitting for 40 years. So whatever's in this fuel pump is from 1982 and up till now, because that's when that car was parked, in 1982. So let's have a look inside. Wow. That's... Uh, Now, I'm not kidding you. I, like, I, would have thought, I was expecting this to be filthy, dirty inside. Look at that. I wonder if there's a date on that somewhere. Man, that, like, that blows my mind. Seriously, I, I've never had this off. I was expecting this to be completely gummed up. Wow. And I actually went and bought a new filter for the other fuel pump that I put on, which you would anyway thinking that this would just be a massive pile of rust. That's pretty amazing, I think it is. I guess no ethanol gas is probably a lot to do with it. So there's the spring, and that's the dirt that's in there. Now the guy that owned this car really did look after it. I think a lot of the issues with that hardtop car came after he passed away, and it just sat and nothing happened to it. Because this guy, like knowing this, like. Maybe I will salvage this fuel pump if I can get this fixed. That's crazy. Let's have a look. That's all. Man. I wish I had a date on that filter. That there's nothing stamped. There's nothing printed on it. Man. All right. Well, not much to clean that up. And again, I, like when I took that off, I couldn't hand, I couldn't get this, this off by hand. It was on there. But I think this gasket right here had dried out enough to let it come off. Huh. Interesting stuff. All right, I'll put that back on for now. Anyway, I'm going to bring you around to the other side so we can look at this part of it. This is crazy. I can't believe it. Anyway, I'm going to get a, a little punch and I'm going to try to open that up a bit so we can get this arm out. So I'll bring you around over here and we'll have a look at it. Well, I picked up, I've got a couple of tools to work with. I got a punch and I've got a chisel, small chisel and a small ball peen hammer. All right, so let's see if I can get this. Hopefully there's enough light. All I'm trying to do is just push this back a little bit to bring that uh, arm out. And it's very soft, so there's not much uh, there's not much there to move. I may have to put the chisel in there, I think. But I'm trying to get a spot for the chisel to, to land on so I can open it up. That chisel might be too wide, too. Now that there's, I see that how nice this pump is inside, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> I can put it with my collection of garbage. I may end up, you know, prying this out. I'm going to try it with a chisel. I may have to go to, yeah, this chisel is a little too wide. I'll grab something. I'll be right back. 
All right, I have a little bit narrower chisel, a little smaller. And hopefully I'm not in your way. So now that I had pushed a little bit of that material back, I think I can get this chisel in to just push those back a little bit further. Yep, seems to be working. I know you can't see it so well. All I'm trying to do is release that shaft. Get the other side. You guys can still see that. I'll put it this way, it might be easier. All right, and I can see it better this way too. I think she's coming out. A little bit more. I'm not getting much more movement in the, this piece, so. It's pretty loose in there so I've never had one of these apart before I know there's guys that have and I don't want to damage this surface in case I can reuse this fuel pump this side's a little bit tight yet over here yeah There she is. That didn't do any damage. I could have put a piece of wood in there. All right, so there it is. Hopefully you can still see it. I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see the arm. All right, why is this not working? There we go. All right. Okay, that popped out easy. Just push those aluminum pieces back. So here's the arm, I'll pull the pin out, take the pin, set it aside. I'll get it. I'm gonna grab a rag, I don't have a rag, my hands are dirty, hold on. All right, got the rag, I'm gonna hit the, the leg of the tripod. Hopefully we're still there, yeah, we're still in view. We got a light too, so I wanna look in there. So let's clean this up and see if it's all worn. So there's a set of numbers in here as well, A, C, C, let's just turn the light on them, so it's, uh, my glasses aren't good, so it's A, C, C, 1801, I'm just trying to see, for looking for where on this fork that the, uh, the plunger shaft goes on. It looks worn. There's a little bit of wear on right in this area right here. But it overall doesn't look too bad. Of course, I've never had one apart, so I don't know what it's supposed to look like. That could be completely gone, far as I know. But the way they're assembled, this has to have had a fork in it, not a hole. So otherwise you'd never get the shaft on. You'd never get it on over the plunger. Well, we'll set that aside as well. So we got the numbers off it. And I'm gonna grab another pair of glasses because I'm not seeing very good with the ones I have on, so hold on. Okay, I got some glasses on so I can see something. And I'm gonna take a look down inside. I'm gonna actually move you guys a little closer, if I can, and get you looking down there with me, if I can. Actually, I'll move this back some. And I'll tip this down a little bit. I'd like for you guys to see it as well. This is as close as I can get to this then I'll shine a light in there. So I haven't looked in there yet. Honestly, I haven't. I got a light with a spot on it. Uh-huh. So I don't know if you can tell in there or not. But what happened there is the spring broke. 
So I'm going to try to fish that spring out. And we'll take a look at it. Oh, sorry guys. Whacked you again in my leg. If it's only the spring, I might be able to salvage this uh, fuel pump as a backup. It wouldn't be a primary, but it could come in handy if I if another one fails. I could use it as a temporary until the new one comes. So I'm going to grab a pair of pliers and pull that spring out. All right, I've got a pair of pliers. Let's fish that old spring out. I put the light on top of the camera here. So hopefully you can see it. If not, I'm going to bring, I'll spring it up. Okay, I got to get my head in here somehow. Head my side, head like mine, hard to get into these little tight places. I keep hitting the tripod. Sorry about that, guys. This, I'm going to have to compress that spring, I guess. All right. I'm trying to grab a hold of it so I can. All right, I'm going to have to move you guys aside because I can't get my head in there. You're not going to see anything anyway. So let me move you aside. And when I get the spring out, I'll bring you back. I'll just set you aside. And you can watch me fish it out. Uh, now I can actually see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. I wish it weren't this way, but that's how it goes. All right. Doing surgery, delicate surgery here. And my long needle nose pliers broke. <laughs> so now I'm having a hard time getting this spring. I got it turned in there. <laughs> I think I'm going to I'm going to grab a screwdriver. I'll be right back. I got my uh, good old what is that? Sabrina, Max Sabrina screwdriver. This is one of the best slot type screwdrivers I've ever had. Unfortunately, I've been abusing the snot out of it because it's always the go-to for doing this kind of stuff. If you can find these for sale, I recommend buying them. They don't look like much, but it's a Mac Sabrina. They're tough as nails. I'm gonna keep looking for them too. They're a great rig. All right, so I got the spring turned. All right, let's see if we can get the, the needle noses back on them. But that spring is definitely broken. And there's a piece of it wrapped around the plunger. Uh, there's a, yeah, there's like a seat for the spring. Yeah, there's a spring seat on the, on the plunger and it's passed over, it's jumped right over that causing the slackness, which would cause the, the clicking sound. Right, this is in the way, of course. What I'm trying to do is grab as much of the coils as I can to compress them and then turn it sideways to get them out. But they aren't cooperating very well with me. There it is. So there's a part of the spring. Hope you can see that. It's all beat up. It's broken. There, look at that. It's in pieces. There's still another piece in there. All right, I'll set this aside. Don't need that out. And I'll grab the rest of the pieces out. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go ahead and take the other piece out. There's a piece that fell over top of the plunger, uh, the uh, spring seat. And then I'll get back to you. There it is. I've got the remainder of the spring out. Hopefully you can see that. So that's all that's left in there for the spring. Now, looking at this thing, I'm not even sure if I could even get a new spring in there. I, I guess I could. If I had a spring and I compressed it this way, slid it down, and then turned it inside the chamber, I could probably get it back in place. I think it would be very fiddly, but I think it can be done. 
But I don't have a spring. I'm gonna have to look for one. Oh, there's still another piece in there, but it's just uh, just laying on the on the. I'll get that out. I'll get that out after. It just needs to be cleaned out anyway. It's all oily in there because this this is direct to the oil uh, to the to the engine block. Anyway, um, that fuel pump still works. Nothing wrong with the plunger. It seems like. So. <sighs> I'll let you look inside. Let's see if we can get in close. I'm gonna grab the camera and we'll get the light over so you can see what's in these things. If you've never, you might be interested, maybe you're not. All right, hang on, I'll get you down close. Well, there it is. That's what it looks like inside one of these rigs. And I'll just point out with the screwdriver what I was talking about, put the rag out of the way. All right. So, the spring sits in this cavity right here. This is the seat the spring sits on. And then when I took out, the, the pieces that I took out were wrapped around and they were on the bottom of the plunger part. So the plunger is being pulled up all the time. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. So with the arm, pulls the plunger up and it goes back down, pulls it up and goes back down. This is a return spring here. So you can see the end of the plunger. Right there, right where my screwdriver is. Hopefully you can see it. There it is, it's a better shot. So that's the end of the plunger, but the fork of the, uh, the fork of the uh, arm, the lever rather, would go in on top of this stuff. Like so, down in there. It would sit in that spot, right like that. Roughly in there, I can't really see what's going on down there, but that's where it would go. And then of course it runs off the camshaft. But that's it. Um, I'm gonna try to find a spring. I don't know if I had an old fuel pump from a uh, Ford truck I had. So I'm guessing these fuel pumps had pretty much the same spring in every one of them. So I'll see if I can dig up that in scrap pile. And if not, we'll just hang on to this because if a diaphragm goes in another one and the spring is still good, I can take it out and put it in this. Or, and I can't really change the diaphragm in this, this particular fuel pump because these are uh, like a can. They've been rolled in. I mean, I could roll it all back and do all that work, but it's really not worth it. You can get these for, you know, $50, $60. There's some numbers in here you might be interested in. Let's have a look. All right, I'll get these numbers and we'll have a look inside. All right, we got the we got A A A C sixteen twenty two sixteen oh nine, and I'm not sure, but that looks like a Napa uh, logo. But I'm not sure. Well, that's it. That's the deep dive into the fuel pump. I'm gonna hang on to it. Um, I uh, I like hanging on to the old parts, and I recommend if you're into this stuff. You hang on to all the old parts as much as you can. They're, everything's getting harder to come by. I hate to be encouraging hoarding, but if you're an old car person, you already are a hoarder. Most likely you have a few cars. So adding a little, a few more parts to have on hand just as parts, there's not, nothing wrong with it. Even these rods, because you can get a fuel pump and change the rod out, because I they do come with different rods for different engines these levers we can see that yeah there's different levers or different angle on here for different engines but the fuel pump itself is the same this one's got a little wear it's got a little wear on the where the cam runs you can see it right there but it's still serviceable so you could take a fuel pump from a different engine change the rod out and provide the same uh, setup with this this pin the same pin setup as this and you might be able to salvage it. So don't throw the stuff away just yet. Hang on to it until you're sure. But I'm still blown away by this. How clean this was after 40 years. Well, I mean, I was running the car with that on it. With the ticking sound. Well, anyway, that's why that engine was ticking. It wasn't the valve train. It was uh, the spring. The spring right here. The spring in the fuel pump was the culprit. So 
before you start throwing money at valves and rockers and lifters and all that jazz, just make sure you know what you're checking. Make sure you know what the problem is. This was a very easy diagnosis for this. Just take a, like I used a, in the video I did, that little short, I used the pry bar, check where the noise is coming from. The noise wasn't coming from the, from the heads or from the block area, it was coming from here. Not to say you don't have both problems going on, but you'll know by checking it. But that saved me hours of work and quite a lot of money and then turn out like just stripping it down to find out that there's nothing wrong it's a, it's a cost and it's money a cost of money and time rather and uh, you don't want to do that so for a simple fuel pump and i think these are around 100 bucks here in canada these fuel pumps so that's her all right guys Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.